Welcome to session seven of Coping with COVID-19. And today's topic is gonna to be safety plans. My name is Jerry Vassar. My name is Diane Wagonholz, and I'm the program director here for Lakeside Global Institute. Diane, um, we are in this place of having uh, ourselves with a lot of different threats in our society. Uh, just the idea of COVID-19 says, you know, I, I went to the store to buy some groceries and everyone looked like bandits. <laughs> it's a strange phenomenon to see everyone in mask and everyone gloved up and everyone's afraid to get close to anybody. And, you know, it's a very fearful time. Yes. I'm gonna catch a disease that may be very life-threatening or the idea of going out in public itself because I've been so confined can be, even driving, all those things can be, have fear places, not to mention the normal things that make us afraid in life. So I know one of the things that we have often talked about uh, in your training at uh, Lakeside Global Institute, uh, particularly in light of our trauma material, is to talk about something called a safety plan. And I see that you have something around your neck and it Ta-da. says safety plan on it. So I was wondering, what is that? I have no idea. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I heard about safety plans was in reading Creating Sanctuary by Sandy Bloom. And I was fascinated by the idea that everybody who worked in this residential treatment facility where she was the psychiatrist created a safety plan and wore them, everybody, from the janitors to the CEO and everyone in between, wore safety plans in order to remind them and to help other people know how to help them stay safe. Mm -hmm. So it just sounded like a brilliant idea if we are in the moments when we're not feeling safe, we're also usually not as conscious of what we might need because we're not really thinking. We're not in the thinking part of our brain. So when you have a safety plan, it really gives you something concrete that you don't have to try to create. So the idea of a safety plan is for each individual to come up with five or six things that for them help them to feel safer. And there's actually two sides to this. One way we feel safer is to come up with things that we can do externally outwardly. The things that if you go into a room and you would feel safer sitting near a door or on the end of an aisle, that might be something that's really important that that creates a sense that I'm safer because I can escape more quickly. Coming up with several different things externally that you can do that help sit next to somebody you know is something you do action external. The other is to do something internal, to be very mindful of what you're doing on the inside of yourself. How are you thinking? And what are some of the ways you can create an internal sense that you're not in danger? So even, and especially with what's going on, to modify these safety plans to be COVID-19 specific. Hmm. So that you're thinking about, like you said, going into a store to be prepared, what kinds of things am I gonna see? And what is it that I need to do externally that help me feel safe? All the social distancing is one. And on a written, you know, like mine is written here, on this to write down when I'm out, do social distancing. You'd think, why would you have to write that down? Everybody knows that. But there's also, I think, something that helps you feel like, look, I've got my plan. I know what it is I can do when I'm out. And so, um, and then internally to be prepared, I'm gonna see a lot of people in masks. And like you said, some people for masks, that's like just a mask itself could represent something. Right, right. So to think a little bit ahead of time, like if I see a sea of people with masks and I start to have that, oh no, oh dear feeling, then maybe what I can do is have an, a, a plan to mentally say, people in masks are protecting me. I don't have to be afraid. And if you write that down as part of your safety plan, then you can even check it before you go into the store. What are the things I need to keep in mind so that you lessen the fact that you're gonna to go to a place of feeling panicked? 
frightened, overwhelmed by things. Mm. People talk about, that we do these in all of our classes on trauma, we've been starting to do them in other classes now too, because we've found that people really, really like knowing they have a plan, a strategy. Just having it is enough to give you an added sense of protection somehow. It's protection from the outside world and it's even protection from your own inside world. Mm. So we do them now, we give out cards at the beginning of classes and have people write them and suggest that they carry them with them. Some people carry them in a wallet or a purse. And they also, another thing you can do, you can do it with your children. You can even create a safety plan for a nonverbal child, for a baby. We had some people in an early childhood center create safety plans for the infants. They knew this infant does better when upset if somebody comes by and sings softly or rocks or wrote down and put, posted it on the crib. Wow. This was this child's safety plan. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. And even for older children to help them understand all that. It, it sends a message, you're important. You're important enough for somebody to care enough to keep you safe. So, so there's a sense of confidence that we get just because we have something in our hands yeah. to direct us in case we are triggered, yeah. in case we are, something comes up and we go, oh, yeah. I go into a, I guess, a high threat, or I, I sense a threat, and I go into a high alert stage, yes. and this safety plan, and maybe that has some internal and external aspects on it, if if I'm clear about what works for me, yeah. um, is on this card or on this piece of paper right. or whatever in my wallet, right. and I can refer to it. Right. And that gives it a sense of um, being present with me. Yes. So. Yes, it's yeah. tangible. You can you can change your safety plan whenever you want. You might have a safety plan that's like this is my safety plan when I'm at work. This is my safety plan when I have to fly somewhere. This is my safety plan for. So you can even you can take this really far. Hmm. The other thing that can be really helpful, I know um, there's some trainers that, there's one of our trainers really had a fear of flying. And so she was going with another trainer and they were flying somewhere and she had her safety plan. But what she also did was she shared it with her, her co-trainer hmm. who was then able to kind of say, okay, so for you, this is what will help you be safe. So, you know, if you knew that I might be anxious somewhere, but you knew what you knew what would help me because you knew it was on my safety plan, that makes you an even better helper. Now, I think that's a little bit interesting for some folks because I now have to share with somebody else what makes me fearful. But So, sure. But I think the result of that, though, is that now you have a partner. Right. And if you have a caring partner, someone who's... Well, the operative word there is... <laughs> Caring. <laughs> That's right. Not somebody, I can't think of anybody who would like to torture somebody. <laughs> no, Just, no, 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 no never, that would never, never happen. Never. So if you had a caring friend with you, um, yeah. that would be another way to not only sh have your own safety plan, but to share it with someone else so yeah. that you, you actually have some support yeah, in exactly. that process yeah. and, and do that. So. Yeah. So one thing I guess we're advocating is if you do um, have some real concerns about situations around you, um, I would advise a safety plan. Right. Uh, that you, you get a nice with. stylish lanyard. Get a lanyard. You can, you get your you own can lanyard. Laminate it. Right. You know. And what a great thing to teach our kids. Yes. That they also have strategies for when they feel like they're unsafe. I wish I'd had this when I was in school. Hmm. I wish the school cared enough to say. We want every student in this classroom to have it, and we will help you maintain safety. Wouldn't that be a cool thing? Maybe we ought to start doing that when kids go back to school. Yeah, it might be something uh, really helpful to some of our, our students as they come back into the world of relationships and feeling yeah. some instability in that and a little bit of fear. If they're bullied, what do they have as a safety plan if they're bullied? Exactly. What a, what a, uh, what a tremendous asset that might be yeah. for bullying situations. And a great conversation starter, too. Great, great. It'd be nice to normalize that, so it'd be okay to have a safety plan of your exactly. own, wouldn't it? Yeah. So that's a, our information about safety plans. We hope you found that helpful, um, and thank you for joining uh, this session of Coping with COVID-19.